Multi-rolls promise at least one four-star card and at least one servant out of the ten cards you get, but the exact way they fulfill that promise is never clearly explained to us. Just before the Rashomon event, I put out a video discussing what I thought was the most likely way this happens based on my own first-hand experience. I suggested the notion of selecting your four-star cards this way was unrealistic because a 5% chance of getting an SSR Servant would mean that it would show up every 20 cards. However, I made a critical mistake there, because this 5% was for only 1 out of the 10 cards. That means 1 in 20 multi-rolls, not 1 in 20 cards, and I hate to say it, but this means I ruled out one of the possible theories without properly exploring it. And it also means I need to do a little more math. Welcome fans of Fate Grand Order, I am Avon, you're watching FGO Tips, and today we're revisiting the math of multi-rolls to discuss some of the questions that kept showing up in the comments and share some of the great points you all brought up. To be honest, I didn't know math was this popular, but I guess you've spoken, so here we go. Since Delightworks doesn't tell us how the 4-star card and Servant are guaranteed, I want to quickly run through the three most common theories I've heard. The first hypothesis is the one I explained pretty thoroughly in my last video. I suggested that the first 9 cards were chosen normally, just as they would be for 9 single pulls, and that the final card would be bumped up if necessary. That means if you haven't pulled any 4-star cards yet, and you happen to pull a 3-star card on the 10th, it will be bumped up to a 4-star Craft Essence instead. And if you haven't pulled any 4-star cards or Servants, it will be bumped up to a 4-star Servant instead. I'm not gonna run through all the math again, but the summary is this. This means the rate of SSR Servants remains unaffected at 1% per card. SSR Servants get a tiny boost, but only in 0.02% of multi-rolls or 0.002% of cards. This results in roughly a 3.002% chance for an SSR Servant. 5-star CEs remain at the standard 4% rate, 4-star CEs are boosted the most and end up at 13.4%. 3-star CEs of course suffer the most and drop down to 38.658%. I'm going to nickname Hypothesis 1, 9 regular cards plus 1 bumped card. A second popular hypothesis that showed up in the comments section was actually pretty similar with a slight twist. All 10 cards are selected normally, just like 10 single pulls. If none of them are servants, then one of the 3-star CEs is changed into a 3-star servant instead. If none of them are 4-star cards, then one of the 3-star CEs is changed into a 4-star CE. And if one or two of the cards has been replaced, then all 10 are shuffled and revealed to the player in a random order. I'm going to nickname Hypothesis 2. 10 regular cards, plus replace up to 2 of them. Obviously the rules would vary a little bit if all 10 cards were 3 star servants, or if all 10 cards were 4 and 5 star CEs, but these cases are so far fetched and don't impact the math too much, so I'm gonna ignore them for the sake of brevity. This means the chances of getting all 10 CEs is 56% of 56% of 56% and so on and so forth 10 times. This translates to 0.56 to the 10th power or 0.3% of the time. In these cases, one of the three star cards is replaced with a three star servant. This will boost the chances of three star servants from the normal 40% to 40.03%. Our chances of getting all 10 three star cards is 80% of 80% of 80% and so on, or 0.8% to the 10th. This comes out to 10.74% of the time. In these cases, one of the 3-star cards is changed into a 4-star CE. This is usually a 3-star CE that gets changed, and again, for the sake of brevity, I'm gonna pretend that's always the case. 4-star CEs will be boosted from their base rate of 12% to 13.074%. In both of these situations, 3-star CEs will be reduced, dropping their rate down to 38.0%. 896%. All of the other rates remain the same as the basic pull rate. Finally, for Hypothesis 3, I want to talk about the theory I dismissed a little too early in my previous video. The basic idea is this. First, a servant is rolled using the normal servant rates. With all of the CEs out of the picture, you now have a 2.3% chance of this card being an SSR servant. After that, a 4 star or better card is rolled using the normal 4 and 5 star rates. Because all of the 3-star cards are out of the picture, you now have a 5% chance of this card being an SSR Servant. 
After that, the remaining 8 cards are pulled using the normal rates, just like they would be for single summons. After all 10 cards are selected, they are shuffled and presented to the player in a random order. I'm going to nickname Hypothesis 3 as 8 regular cards, plus 1 servant, plus 1 4 or 5 star card. I know it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, I'm sorry. I mistakenly dismissed this as a possibility, thinking that the 5% chance for an SSR servant was far too high to be possible. But when I revisited the math, I was surprised to see that this didn't impact the overall rate of SSR servants by that much. One out of 44 multi-rolls would give us a 5 star servant from the servant only roll, and one out of 20 multi-rolls would give us a 5 star servant on the 4 or 5 star only roll. This means that 7.16% of the time we'd get at least one 5 star servant from these two rolls alone. If you add in the other 10 rolls normally, you can see that you'll get at least one 5 star servant from approximately 14.33% of multi-rolls, and if we average that out evenly, we can expect that a little more than 1.5% of cards would come out as 5 star servants, and suddenly this isn't seeming quite as far-fetched as I thought it was. Now, I'll spare you from listening to the same explanation a second time, but suffice it to say that 4 star servants are boosted similarly and end up at a 4.66% rate. 3 star servants are boosted also, but only by one of those first two cards instead of both of them. 4 and 5 star CEs are boosted by the other one of those first two cards. 3 star CEs end up suffering much more in this hypothesis than in either of the previous two. Instead of being 1 or 2% lower than the 3 star servants, they actually end up more than 9% lower instead. Since these new rates were fairly close to each other, I knew trusting my memory was no longer good enough. I rewatched all of my old multi rolls to tally the results, and after 49 multi rolls, a total of 490 cards, here were my results. 5 SSR servants, just barely over 1%. Right off the bat, this made me suspect that Hypothesis 3 was wrong after all. My 4 star servant rate was just barely over 3%, just like Hypothesis 1 predicted, and 3 star servants were at exactly 40%. Almost all of my numbers matched Hypothesis 1 or 2 pretty well, and they made Hypothesis 3 look almost impossible. I was about ready to call it when I remembered a comment reminding me that limiting the data to my own experiences was not very scientific of me, especially given the wealth of data available right here on YouTube. With that in mind, I set out to double my data set by watching some other YouTubers and tallying their multi-rolls as well. Honestly, I fully expected their results to conform roughly to mine and prove me right, but honestly, they didn't. This video is getting a little bit long though, and I'm afraid I'm never going to get done at this rate, so I'm going to stop for now. I promise the conclusion as soon as possible though, but in the meantime, good luck with your Rashomon rating, good luck with your Shuten rolling, and as always, thanks for watching.